Hi. Well, once again, I've got another project on the go. I've got a 210 lathe. It's all stripped down at the moment, but already started on the electrics. Got the ESS, of course, and I needed a bob for the lathe. Now, I didn't want anything to too much because you know the lathe's only two axes and a couple of inputs and a few outputs that's about it you know i didn't want much so i've come on to the warp 9 site having a look at the different bobs that was on there and i got down to the mb2 and i thought well you know yes the mb2 i've got that running in my mill and I, I've never had a problem with it. It's always done exactly, it, you know, it, it does what I ask of it. But then I notice underneath, there's a new MB3. So that got me into thinking, well, what's new about it, apart from it looks good. So I've nipped over to CNC room to have a look at this MB3. And just looking down at some of the specs, you know, things that jumped out to me straight away is obviously you only need the single 24 volt power supply, which does all the electronics on the board, plus it runs the ESS for you. Um, status LEDs for all inputs and outputs it is is a big one for me because I like to be able to see what's going on if I'm doing any diagnostic. The Anaspeed 2 naught 10 volts, absolutely great. And the MB2 is only a naught to 5 volts, or unless you add an external 10 volt power supply, you know, to bring it up to the naught to 10 volts. There's just you know so much stuff on here that that's completely new i decided on the fact right then i'll tell you what i'll get the mb3 and i'll put that on the mill because it, it's got more stuff on there that i'd use on the mill and i'll take the mb2 and use that for the lathe so you know that's what i'm thinking of and you know i was mulling it over for a bit and then i come across this top panel so i thought i'd have a quick look at this top panel ten dollars and it protects the ess board whilst it's in the case which that sounds all right to me so yeah i might as well get one of them as as well but um it, it really that done it for me look at all them flashing lights i've got to have one of them that's what made my mind up. Now, seriously though, it, um, from looking at it, I, I thought, yeah, I'll go for that. So I ordered one, and it's come from Thailand, and it got from Thailand to the UK in three days. Now, that's what I call service. When I bought the MB2, it was exactly the same, you know, very speedy service. If it says it's in stock, it's in stock and it's it's posted out to you straight away. So let's have a quick look at what has come in the post. As usual with DHL, we've got a customs sticker to say that they've had a look. They always wanna see what goodies I've bought. Anyway, this is how it's turned up. We have the MB3 board, obviously, a bag of bits, and that is obviously the top board. Let's have a look at the board. I, I was very impressed with this. It is so clean and spotless. There's, there's no, um, what do they call it, uh, splatter marks from the soldering or flux residue it's just absolutely spotless and clean so that was a good impression to start with so let's have a quick overview of the board 
Starting from the top, we've got 23 input pins and these are divided up into four sections of A, B, C and D. Now A has got six inputs, B has got six inputs, C has got six inputs and D has got five inputs. Now any one of these four blocks can be either NPN or PNP. Now the way we do this, each one of the blocks has got a common. So the CMA that you see is actually common A and then common B, common C and common D. Now to make an NPN input, we would join the common A with the 24 volts. Now to make a PNP we would cross or join together the common A with the 0 volts. Now for the 5 volt inputs if you've got anything that needs um, a low current input like an encoder or an MPG then you'd use the 5 volts, but there's a little bit more setup for the 5 volts, which I'll show you a bit later within the video. Now, these four blocks, block A, B and C, are actually 14.3 kilohertz um, optocouplers that are on here. Now, Block D is slightly different, as you can see, it's sat all by itself. Now that's got five 28.5 kilohertz octocouplers on them, which is twice, as, twice the speed of the other three blocks. So it's, you know, if, you, if you're going to run a spindle index or anything like that, this is going to want to be on block D. Moving on to the right hand side, we could probably call this the axis side if you like, because basically, well, it's labelled up as all your axes at X, Y, Z, and your A, B, C, and D. Now, starting at the top, we've got a ground and we've got two VCCs. And these are 5 volts. Now these are being fed by a DC to DC converter, which is this one here. But the maximum it will actually output is 600 milliamps. So if you're going to use a system um, for your steppers that you need to feed 5 volts into them, you really might want to think of sourcing that 5 volts from somewhere else. Now, incidentally, talking about the VCC, now, if you actually, you know, sort of like haven't got your read the manual head on in the morning and you go and connect 24 volts to that VCC and ground, then there's a tiny little thing you can't see it in this um photograph here but it's actually labeled as um i think it's tv it's tvs1 which is a handy little device and it was very handy for me because if we send, try and send 24 volts through it it will just short out and blow and protect the rest of your board now to recover from that you will have to either replace that TVS1 or like I did on my board I've just soldered the two pads together and it's been working ever since although I have lost that um, extra protection on the VCC circuit anyway that was me just being a plonker so don't put 24 volts into the VCC and physically you know that's all I can say about um, that block there apart from don't worry if you've only got an XYZ you haven't lost all them outputs that have been assigned to the 
um, A axis, B axis and C axis because you can still use them as outputs. So that brings us to the bottom block of connectors and these are all outputs apart from the 24 volts and the 0 volts. So this is your main 24 volt input and it's recommended you use a power supply of 3 amps. Now it is safety protected and there is a fuse on board purely for that 24 volts so if your board does go dead for any reason then F1 which is the fuse is just worth checking. To the left of these we have a 5 volt and a 0 volt output just for general usage. Now the MB3 has three relays built on board and each one of these three has got a normally open terminal and a normally closed terminal. They've also got a common terminal because there are some jumpers on the back well they're actually pads you have to cut but we'll have a look at those later on which will disengage the relay and make that pin just a normal output pin. Now the relays themselves are rated at half an amp at 120 volts AC which is not much use to anybody in the UK since we work on 240 volts or 230 in most places but you can have one amp at 24 volts DC wise these really are for your forward and reverse and spindle enables on your VFDs. This brings us to our outputs and these are all sync outputs and capable of syncing 70 milliamps which is a bit of a drop from the MB2 because the outputs were 100 milliamps on them but anyway these are 70 milliamps and per bank of seven you can't use no more than 500 milliamps and last of all down in the corner here we've got the Anna Speed 2 circuit and the Anna 2 the Anna 2 the Anna Speed 2 um, circuit actually has its own DC to DC power supply so it's supplying its voltage to it it's isolated from the rest of the board and it will not suffer from any voltage spikes any rising or lowering it so the speed you set will always be a constant voltage going to the VFD so that was a quick walk around the board just given a general overview of the inputs and outputs but we aren't finished there because we're now going to flip it over now we have some additional configuration items on the back of the MB3 and these are very well documented within the manual but just a couple of points I'm going to show you which will correspond to some of the things that I've shown you on the front of the board. Now you remember earlier when we was looking at the inputs I mentioned if you're using 5 volts whether it be NPN or PNP there is an extra step that you need to take. Now if we look at the diagrams from the manual you'll see both of these 5 volt tolerance ones have got this extra little bridge sitting underneath. Now these little bridges are referring to these little pads here. Now if it's got a red link on it and you want to make it 5 volt tolerant then you need to solder or join these two pads together 
So as you can see, X310, which is port 3, pin 10, I'll be using for a spindle index, and it needs to be 5 volts. So the pad has now been soldered to join the two together, which has made it 5 volt input. Now you can't put a 24 volt on that now, it will damage it. But let's take it one step further. This is our D block of inputs, which is using the fast octocouplers, so, so the fast inputs. Now let's say we only want to use four of those at five volts, but yet we need another one which is 24 volts. So let's assume we've soldered all our pads on 310, 311, 312 and 313. So they're all now 5 volt tolerant. Now 315, we want that to be 24 volts. But as you can remember, we've already got 5 volts running on this rail at the top here. Now this is where we can free that actual um, pin 315 from the rest of that rail. And we do that by cutting this tiny little track here. Now once you've cut the track, that X315 is no longer a part of that block. So we can now solder a link from the bottom pad of 315 and we can actually move that across to whether it's block C, B or A, whatever they're set up as, and they become tolerant to whatever they, that, them rails, the self are set up. So if you've got X215 set up as a PMP and you bridge the bottom track from 315 to 215, that now becomes a high speed PMP using um, that pin in block D. Now everything else on the back of the board is all self-explanatory. It's written in the manual, straightforward. If you want to override the charge pump, then just solder them two pads together. If you want the delays on the K2 and K1 relays, then you just solder them pads. Well, that's it for this video. I will see you in part two, where we'll get it all set up and running in Mac 4. I know, I just couldn't resist it.